Let's look at the first example in alternate weather minimums planning. Assuming the following minima for the Vancouver airport using two or more usable precision approaches, what is your alternate minima? Because it says precision approach, we're looking at the ILS minimums and the minimums are the same regardless of the aircraft approach speed category. On the left hand side, you'll see 209 feet. That is the altitude above sea level. In my course, I personally call that the fixed minimums. And on the right hand side, you'll see in brackets, it says 200 feet and half a mile. That 200 feet is the height above ground level and in my course I call that the variable minimums. I like to split it into two to make the calculations easier. Now let's quickly go back and look at the alternate minimums chart. You'll see with the two or more usable precision approaches to two separate runways the fixed minimums are 401 and the variable minimums are 200 and a half added to the height above touchdown zone and the visibility. So let's input those numbers into our calculation. So our fixed minimums are 400 feet AGL and one statured mile from the alternate minimums table and the variable minimums are 200 feet height above touchdown zone and a half statured mile. We're going to add the 200 and one half from the minimums box. So that's the above ground level section equals to 400 feet and one statured mile. Now we have to compare the fixed minimums to the variable minimums and determine which one is the higher of the two. So when we compare the two sides, we'll see that in this case, they're both the same. So as long as the TAF shows 400 feet AGL and one statured mile at the bare minimum, you can use this airport for your alternate. Let's look at another example. In this example, assuming the following minima for the Gander Airport using one usable precision approach, what is your alternate minima? So the precision approach is the ILS approach, and you can see for all the categories, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, it's the same. On the left-hand side is the 688 feet, which is above sea level. On the right-hand side, it's 200 feet, and that's above ground level. And the advisory visibility is a half statute mile, RVR 2600. So when we go back to our alternate minimums table, I've highlighted here the one precision approach. We're gonna use these numbers. 600 feet AGL, two miles for the fixed. So we're going to take those numbers and put it into our calculations. The fixed minimums again, 600 feet AGL, two statute miles from the alternate minimum stable, and the variable minimums, 300 feet height above touchdown zone, one statute mile. You add the 200 feet and half mile from the alternate minimums box equals to 500 feet and one and a half statute miles. So now we want to compare both the left hand side and the right hand side to determine which of these is higher. In this case, 600 feet AGL and two statute miles is the highest visibility when you compare the two sides. And when you're looking at the TAF, your terminal aerodrome forecast to determine whether to use the airport as an alternate, this is the minimum visibility and ceiling it must show to use it as a legal alternate. Now, because the visibility is 600 feet and two statute miles, we're legally allowed to use the sliding scale. Another name for the sliding scale is known as standard alternate minimum. So looking at the sliding scale, you can see if we have a ceiling of 600 and a visibility of two, we can also have a ceiling of 700 feet, but our visibility has to drop down to one and a half statute miles, or we can have a ceiling of 800 feet and the visibility is one statute mile. So it gives you some flexibility where you have a higher ceiling, but you must trade off half a mile visibility each time. So on your exam, look for these little tricks. In the answer, they may even give you the sliding scale as part of the answer. So just take your time with it.